Canada welcomes immigrants with open arms. It is considered the haven of foreign trained professionals. The immigrants have built Canada and they constitute 73% of its workforce. Uh, I came here with a big hope. Everybody is talented. It seems like they have to reinvent themselves. There should not be any chance of losing the hope. Canada attracts people, qualified people, educated people, just to put them in labor. Canada selects the best and the brightest from all over the world. Most of them arrive here with a vision of better living, but end up doing survival jobs. Dr. Ishrat Pervin is one of them. She has a long story of struggle here. They evaluated my certificate and two equivalency they gave me. One is graduation in biology and one is PhD. That's not enough. Now I'm doing in the Walmart uh, in some staffing, joining, uh, like this. But what I am doing here, I'm doing odd job, even though I'm not getting $9 job. New immigrants come here on the basis of educational qualification, but prospective employers and the professional organizations often don't recognize their credentials. Rajinder Lamba is a physiotherapist with eight years of experience from India. She is still inhibited by the issues of recertification. When you come here, then you come to know that you know, certification is required, but certification, taking a certification is like too long, too costly, and too tedious. They don't recognize our qualifications. They have asked me to get my qualifications assessed by uh, their legal counsel. Uh, that's a long process, and I have to undergo that process. Till that time, I had to do uh, some other jobs. The professional bodies tend to give preference to the Canadian-born and deny immigrants access to the highly desired occupations. In the GTA alone, 90,000 people are driving cabs, and 40% of them are professionals. To see uh, when you go to an emergency and there is nobody to take care of you and you sit there for five hours doing nothing and, you know, and then another time you see a doctor who's driving a truck, this is kind of hilarious. Governing bodies of the professions want to control entry into the profession, um, partly to maintain the uh, uh, the salary structures and um, also to be able to control the uh, entries into and, and uh, the qualifications. Uh, the laws are governed by recommendations usually from these governing bodies. Uh, to some extent governments have uh, some independence but they usually follow the advice of the governing bodies. This particular point should actually be taken by government. It should not be under any physiotherapy association. Luis Carlos migrated from Mexico. He is an actor, dancer, and choreographer. He is still struggling to discover himself in the ocean of immigrants. I think I follow the, the deep propaganda of what Canada is about. And, uh, and my dreams were um, to get into the movie industry and the, uh, the film industry and, and into dance as well. Uh, after five years or six, I, I, I realized that um, it is not the land that is promised to be. And, uh, and basically, uh, what I think is, is a very protective system for people who have been here for a long time. And they use very different uh, excuses to keep you out of the scene. Job experience obtained from other countries is not considered equal to the standards established for Canadian workers. Many immigrants lose their money and time working just for Canadian experience. They ask for the experience that it start from the scratch. Uh, my supervisors are like high school pass. What does that mean? Uh, I should not comment anything on this. My managers do not even hold a bachelor's degree. I do have the experience. Why don't you take me? Why are you taking me into something which, where I don't have any experience in? 
Eric Nawas is a job market analyst. He is successfully operating an interactive website, jobsforcanada.com, on matters pertinent to new immigrants. His opinion on the issue of Canadian experience is a valuable one. The requirement for a Canadian experience is uh, totally unrealistic and uh, unfair in the sense that uh, a newcomer definitely never worked in Canada and uh, if they worked in an international companies, uh, international companies have got uh, standards and those standards would be the same worldwide. Uh, I guess an engineer working in the oil and gas in Dubai will be working with the same standards in an oil and gas company in Calgary. Employers find the lack of language proficiency as a significant barrier in hiring skilled immigrants. Often, their occupation-specific language skills don't carry any weight. Language can be it can be upgraded by the time they work. You know, I mean, it, it's uh, it's not that important um, compared to the importance of uh, upgrading in the professions. There should be some code and some kind of ethics um, on the employers. There is some missing link, which prevents them from obtaining a decent job. Some find it political or discriminatory, while others take it as mismanagement. Uh, to me, that would indicate uh, um, a certain amount of uh, racism in the society, uh, a certain amount of um, unwillingness to accept uh, people from other cultures for whatever reason. So that's certainly a, a continuing problem that hasn't gone away yet. Whoever has got talent, they are coming into Canada, but Canada doesn't have that infrastructure to, to absorb them. You know, they say it's a multicultural society and everything, but every time I turn the TV on, it's the same Anglo-Saxons doing the same things. When you face the interview, you get a different opinion. When you come to this country, you have a different treatment. So, it's upside down. Everything from immigration to getting jobs, getting certifications, getting education again, all is business deal and they are uh, squeezing money out of the immigrants. Vilma Felici is an immigration practitioner and an expert on immigrants' issues. Our Canadian employers not being familiar with the educational systems of the countries where people come from, there's a problem with a bit of racism and, uh, and uh, there is a problem too that the government does not give or did not give the employers, Canadian employers, any incentives so that they would hire newcomers until recently. Uh, now they have started to create programs that hopefully will work, um, incentives for companies to hire newcomers. So it looks a bit better for the future. Uh, but we have to wait in and see, really. What is frustrating is that Canada has not created an economic environment to retain this workforce, the loss of which results in $2.4 billion of possible revenue every year. The immigrants are reassessing their positions, and many of them are thinking to join the diaspora. I have no alternate way because I have to survive every day, every moment when I think what I was and what I am doing here. I lost everything. I lost everything. I'm really, really frustrated, disappointed. Before they bring the people here, they had to advise the people, this is what your qualification when you go, you're, going, you're not going to get this job or that job. So you had to go from here. And in case my hopes are not fulfilled here, the job and my love is still open in my country. A lot of talents are just spoiled, like are not used, and which is not good for the country. If Canada cannot fulfill their needs, they cannot fulfill Canada's needs as well. Matters are getting worse. With a declining birth rate and an aging population, Canada cannot afford to lose this pool of talent. The question remains, is there any way to use this untapped potential to the advantage of Canada?